So I welcome everybody to our See, Hear and Respond Child Neglect Conference 2023, be part of Making a Difference. It's so lovely to see so many multi-agency um, sort of partners in the room today as well. So my name's Kellyanne Perry, I'm the Practice Improvement Manager for Warsaw Safe Garden Partnership. So we just want you to absolutely enjoy today. Um, we've got lots of really interesting presenters and workshops happening this afternoon. So please make, like I said, the, make the most of the networking opportunities. We've got lots of different agencies in the room today. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Sally Hodges, who is our Independent <coughs> Chair for Warsaw Safe Garden Partnership. Hello everyone, good morning. It's so nice to see... Oh, this is where it gets tricky. <laughs> okay, they didn't tell me this in advance. I've got to do two things at once, which um, is always a challenge. Um, it's nice to see everyone in the room, and it's surprising how everyone looks the same but different from a Teams meeting. I hope that plays to my advantage, to those of you who've been watching me on Teams for quite some time. Um, and it's great to see lots of people from different agencies join us today, and a, and a full room of people. Um, I have to say, Teams is brilliant, but it's not the same as being in person, and it's really nice to have the opportunity to chat and talk and meet people that you see on the screen that you never actually see in person, so take the opportunity to get stuck in and have some conversations. It's my job to introduce this conference today. Um, it's going to be a really good day. I'm looking forward to it, but I was just reflecting on my way in about neglect, um, and I was remembering my school days, so that's prehistory, clearly. Um, and my school in the northeast of England was a bit like, I don't know if any of you are old enough to have seen any of the Carry On films, but Carry On Teacher had a really old Victorian school and that's what my school looked like. And we had a small class, this would be about seven or eight I think, very small class of children, um, all girls. And there were two girls in our class who, who nobody had much to do with. And this is me looking back now, I'd be about seven or eight. Now these girls were smelly. Um, small and they had knits and they always wore wellies all the time, rain or shine, they never wore anything but wellies. Um, and we had a box of clothes in the corner of our class um, that, were, that we would bring clothes we'd grown out of and they all went in the box and surprise, surprise, these girls turned up wearing them all the time. Um, and our teacher made us all take turns to sit next to them, which meant we all got knits all the time so that we, we never escaped it. But looking back and we don't we didn't really want to because they were smelly girls and they didn't play the same and they didn't come round to our houses and they were skinny and straggly and dirty basically and looking back now i can see absolutely a lot of the characteristics you know the the names the words that have been coming up as we've been sitting around this morning those children were very seriously neglected i didn't appreciate that as a little seven eight year old myself but i have often wondered over the years what happened to them and how different their life experiences will have been to mine as a result of those first years of their lives. I can see their faces as clear as clear and I've, I've kind of not worried about them but you know they've been in my mind over my professional time. I wonder what happened to those girls because they had the most awful start in life. They never went on school trips etc. We all knew they had free school meals, all the kind of classic things that we as children in that classroom didn't appreciate the difficulties they were facing. So um, it's pertinent, I think, to understand we will all have come across children like that in our lives in school. It's important that we all understand the effect of neglect and that we bear it in mind in our professional lives all the time because the effects are undoubtedly lifelong and we will find out more about that as the morning wears on. So um, the partnership which I chair um, has all kinds of responsibilities but it's the old in old money it's the safeguarding board it changed to become the partnership um, and um, it it has a specific purpose obviously um, it's to provide effective and informed leadership that is to the system as a whole all the agencies involved in safeguarding, all the services involved in safeguarding, it has a responsibility to oversee the direction of travel for that. And it's got to make sure that we deliver on our shared responsibilities. In Walsall, there are combinations around the, the adults and children's agenda um, uh, because there are some uh, crossovers. So at, at one point, it was uh, everything in it was shared. 
But now we've separated them out a little bit so there is a much more of a focus on children in some areas and adults in others. That helps us get into the bones of what we're doing a little bit more. We have to promote positive working relationships and events like today really do help with that. So I hope everyone will take the chance to talk to someone that you normally don't work with. I've chatted to a, a, a very nice policeman as we were coming in uh, this oh, morning. <laughs> And I can see some, a couple of nurses uniforms I think I saw at one point, so I'm going to be going and trying to have a conversation with people that aren't social workers, because social work is my background, but it's nice to chat with, uh, with others. We've got to identify learning, so any opportunity, and we'll be doing that this morning through Pauline's presentation, is what are we learning about what we're looking at and what can we therefore do that's different and better? And of course, obviously, we have to provide assurance that we are all endeavouring to do our very best to protect children and young people of Walsall. So it's led by the three key statutory partners. The council, this is the executive, and the main representative on that is Sally Rowe, your director of children's services. When she can't be there, she sends one of her other directors, Isabel or Colleen, so you are always uh, represented in that meeting. The Black Country Integrated Care Board is represented by Sally Roberts. Um, if she isn't there, she often sends Maria. I know that Sophie, I've seen Sophie in the room somewhere. Um, Sophie's a, oh, right at the back, a regular attender at the leadership meeting as well. So everyone is represented at different parts in this partnership. And Phil Dolby, the chief super, is the rep on the exec in the police. And then we have other police representatives in other parts of the system in the meetings. Um, we have two independent chairs, myself with the children's hat on and Derek Benson with the adults hat on. Derek and I chat all the time, obviously, because there are crossovers in the agenda. Um, and we've made a commitment to include children and young people as a fourth partner. Um, fourth partner might be a bit of a clumsy phrase, but it's important that we get children and young people's views. I think it's an area that we need to concentrate on more. As a partnership, um, lots of different agencies do seek views. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that at all, because I know that you do. There's all the looked after children arrangements, there are arrangements through health, etc., to take the views of children and young people and families. But as a partnership, um, we need to concentrate on how we might do that more collaboratively. There's a good diagram for you. I'll just pass on that one, because I know you can't see it. And this is a bit the same, the colour's not helpful to you, but this just shows you how the safeguarding partnership, which is in the middle here, links with lots of others. So we've got, for example, health and wellbeing, community safety, Walsall together, MASH management, violence reduction unit. Those are the other partnerships that deliver the goods in Walsall. And the safeguarding partnership has links into all of those. So we try to be as joined up as we possibly can be. So as a result of work that we've done, so the audit work and the serious case review work and all the rest of it, stuff that happens all the time, the partners agreed that the key uh, priorities would be all age exploitation, hence my comments about working with adults, neglect in children, hence today's conference, and in adults, it's self-neglect. At one point, we did think about neglect for adults and children, but actually they are two completely different things. So we've separated them out into two and uh, neglecting children is obviously the focus of today's event. So um, without further ado, we're now going to look at the neglect strategy, which Isabel and colleagues have been developing over a period of time. And Isabel is going to take you through that. So enjoy the morning, watch, listen, learn, do take the chance to talk to each other. And I'll talk to you all later on. Thank you. You see, it's tricky. Yeah. Morning, everyone. Um, so, thank you, Sally, for that introduction. Um, I'm Isabel van der Heeren. I'm the uh, Director for Early Health and Partnerships, and partnerships really important um, in children's services. And I've had the privilege for the last, I think, two years to be the chair of the Neglect Subgroup. And uh, we've worked hard with partners to think about neglecting Walsall and kind of the actions we can take in terms of preventing neglect or uh, where children are experiencing neglect, providing the right help and support. 
Um, just in terms of picking up practicalities, Kellyanne has neglected to tell you we've got a hashtag today, which is on the screen there, and I think it's on your tables as well. So really important part of today is reflecting, you know, kind of what you hear today, who you talk to, what does that mean in terms of your practice, and what does that mean in terms of the help and support we can provide for children in terms of prevention and supporting neglect. Um, so really important uh, first bit is to take you through the strategy and what we've developed so far. But throughout today, we'll be asking you to ask us to think about what the next steps are. What are the things we as a safeguarding partnership need to think about in terms of supporting you as practitioners or as managers or as organisations in terms of taking the next steps of preventing neglect in Warsaw? Um, and providing that right help and support. So please interact with us today. Tell us what you're thinking. Tell us what actions you're going to take as a result of today, but also what we need to take forward in taking it to the next level. Oh, I've got to do it myself now. So we asked you when you came in what neglect <coughs> meant to you. Um, and here is the word cloud that kind of gives a representation of what people think in the room um, today. And you might want to think again, going out from today, you know, whether the three words you put up there have changed um, for you or kind of when you think about that in a different way. But I think it ranges from, you know, the, the kind of the, the language that cares kind of around forgotten, um, you know, not getting the right support, ignored, to kind of what neglect might mean for children in terms of outcomes. So when we developed the neglect strategy, we thought about the definition um, around neglect, and the 2018 working together gives us a definition of what neglect means. And we kind of reflected on some of the language of the definition, which was about a failure to meet the children's basic or physical or physio physiological needs and leading to serious harm, serious impairment, long-term impact onto children. Um, but when, as a neglect subgroup, we reflected on that, there's a graduate response around neglect and we felt it really important in the strategy and in the work that we're doing is that we reflect the language because the language we are using can be an, an enabler or a barrier in terms of offering support and accepting support. The language we wanted to use in the, in the strategy was very much recognising that most parents, most people who care for children want to do the right thing and want to meet their children's needs, but sometimes that's quite difficult. And so therefore when we talk about neglect, we've got to think about the language that we use to enable them to understand what good parenting looks like, how we can meet the needs of children in Walsall, and what support is out there that we can connect them to, to help them to meet that need. And we also talked about the context, the context of Walsall and the communities in which children <coughs> grow up with, some of the difficulties that some of our communities might experience, but also some of the difficulties parents might experience themselves. Um, you know, parents with learning difficulties in terms of understanding, you know, how you meet the needs of children, parents who are struggling around the cost of living and kind of the increasing poverty in kind of Warsaw, um, but also the context of multiple siblings, multiple children, and therefore what does each child needs mean, and if we don't meet those children needs, what the impact of it is. So those are the things when we think about what neglects me, those are the things we need to start building into it. I'm just going to skip over this, but in 2021, again, when we started to think about neglect, we, we brought a group of people together and said, what has worked so far and what do we need to think about? And we came up with four principles in terms of professionals, practitioners. One was we needed to have a collective understanding of what neglect meant, and, and we're trying to address that through the strategy. People felt it needed to be outcomes focused. We needed to look at the impact on children and know that we are collectively making an impact um, on improving outcomes for children. 
The third principle was that people were saying we often look at negative practice, things we can do better, but actually there's really good practice out there, there's really good interventions out there that are already supporting children and young people in a really good way. So let's celebrate that, let's look at how we can upscale that. And today you will see we've kind of brought some organisations around that can share that good practice. The workshops today will be about sharing good practice that already happen in Warsaw and then think about how we can upscale that. Uh, and the, the, the fourth thing that people are saying is I can kind of develop the practice in my organisation, but if my organisation doesn't support me, in kind of embedding that practice, then that's not going to work. So that collaborative leadership as part of our strategy going forward was really important. Like Sally, very complicated. I'm going to skip over that. But what I want to kind of say with this is that the neglect subgroup and the strategy is connected to lots of other things. And that's really important to make sure that we make change happen. So on the right hand side, the neglect work that we are doing and will continue to do is linking into other partnership boards. It's linking into the work we're doing with Warsaw together around the integrated health and care. It's linking into community safety around the work we're doing around serious youth violence. It's linking in with lots of partnerships. And on the right hand side, it's kind of saying the neglect subgroup doesn't sit as a silo within the partnership, safeguarding partnership. It's connected to training and development. It's connected to the adult work we're doing around self-neglect. So that connectivity around the strategy and the work we're doing in the subgroup is really important. And I guess I want you to think about today the connectivity you need to um, make happen within your practice or within your organisation to help us to address neglect in Warsaw. We will continue the cycle. So we have gone through this cycle to develop the strategy. We're almost mid-2023. We're looking to revise the strategy ready for 2024. So we will be going through a new cycle of starting today around our understanding um, of what neglect looks like, um, understanding of the practice, looking at the outcomes, reflecting on it and then saying what are the next steps, what outcomes do we want to achieve, what do we need to build in. So we asked children and young people what they felt neglect was in Warsaw and as you kind of put the wording on, this is some of the key themes that came out for them. Not getting the right support, someone's not quite happy because they are not getting the right support and children not being able to pursue certain activities or dreams. When we looked at the data, there were some key findings when we kind of looked at uh, neglect in Walsall. So in Walsall, the biggest referrals we get to uh, MASH or through our front door is for children aged 0 to 5. So 40% of referrals around neglect are children aged 0 to 5. Um, and, and that's no surprise, but what was a surprise to us is that those referrals come from either school or police. So they either happen when a child starts school age or they have siblings who, who are of school age, or they start on a crisis where there's a police call out. And we felt within the strategy, we needed to think about the missed opportunities. Where can we start identifying children much earlier? And what does that mean for children to be identified at the point you know, where either a crisis happens or when, you know, they started to go to school. We also identified that older children, um, we needed to kind of focus on that because what we were looking at for older children and especially around multi-agency audits we've done is that we're looking at the behaviour but we don't always understand the, the neglect they have experienced which has led to that behaviour. And it displays in a different way. So we've done some audits around um, children involved in serious youth violence. And when we look back at their journey, often we see a journey of neglect and we see some missed opportunities around supporting those families in the right way. We looked at the data and you'll see if you look at the strategy, um, there are some over and under representation. So we know that Asian, Asian white um, children are we're not seeing as many referrals in terms of comparison to population um, as we're seeing overall. 
And we also know that children of mixed backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, are overrepresented in our referrals for neglect. So again, we want to understand why that is. Is that about that early intervention and prevention around engagement with communities, connectivity with communities? Or is that because certain communities have a better network of support around them? So we're doing some um, discussions with communities and understanding that connectivity around support. We have to think about the impact of the pandemic and actually coming out of the pandemic, we've got to think about the long-term impact of the pandemic and then the other complexi complexi complexity, I can't say the word, um, around the cost of living and kind of the increased pressures on families um, around that. And thinking what does that mean for families, but also what's the impact on each of the children living in those families. And we did a survey with school around children going back to schools and kind of what they worried about. And again, neglect was one of the things that schools highlighted with us. Children not coming ready uh, to learn, children feeling hungry, um, lots more requests for help with school uniform in terms of um, poverty, etc. And then what we also, the fifth one was around that um, right help, right time. So again, the effective identification. So again, multi-agency audit shows that lots of people doing lots of really good work with families, but often it happens in silos. And what we're not looking at is that multi-agency support and also identifying it really early on when we can to, when we can and connecting people with support. But when we have an intervention at a, a kind of a more intensive level, either at targeted early health or social care, we don't always think about the sustainability and how we connect people sustainable to a network of support that will help them to continue to provide good parenting and meet their children's needs. When we worked with children, we had a group of children and young people we worked with as part of the Safeguarding Partnership and we had a couple of workshops with them and we kind of said, look, we're doing all this work around preventing children um, from living in neglect in, in Warsaw. What is it we need to, what do you think we need to do as a partnership? And they came up with three principles which um, kind of were really enlightening and I think we need to keep those principles at the forefront of our thinking. So one was around training, and what they were saying is we think everyone in Warsaw needs to understand what neglect is, what it looks like, how you identify it, and how you can support. And actually, those children took it a step further, and they said, we think children in schools need to be taught about neglect, and they need to be taught about how, how they can be kind to their peers. And it reminded me of Sally's story of if Sally had in her curriculum at school had had something around, you know, children's needs and kind of my my friends might look a bit different or come to school a little bit different and, and that kindness, that support might have been put in place earlier on because it's not only what they experience at home but then some of the bullying behaviour, not belonging in a friendship group has a further traumatic impact on the children. So I thought that was really profound of those children. So we do want to think about the next step around the neglect strategy and the work we do with schools around um, incorporating that. Seeing and hearing children, um, and that's really important all the way from, you know, a child that's born to a teenager. They they say things in a different way, they have different behaviours, so let's see and hear them and listen to them, whatever their voice looks like. And then the third most important thing, what action can we take? What action can we take as an organisation, as a practitioner, and who else do we need to connect with to give the right support? But taking the right action is really uh, important. So we've got four priorities, um, they're all in your pack and actually I've, um, we've produced a little bit of a strategy on a page. It's got a QR code, so we're going into the 21st century, to the full strategy so you don't have to Google it when you're um, kind of looking for the strategy on the uh, Safeguarding Partnership website. Um, but we've got four priorities, uh, and again, we're going to talk a lot about the priorities today and kind of linking it into best practice. But the first priority I've already touched on in terms of to improve awareness and understanding of neglect, so that first thing, let's make sure that everybody in Warsaw who comes in touch with children and, and families, 
whether you are a practitioner in a housing provider, or your voluntary sector, or your social work, it's really important that everybody can understand neglect and the impact. And we're starting from the basis that actually parents, most parents, want to meet the children's needs. They want to provide the right help and support. They want their <coughs> children to achieve and grow up to be healthy, happy, and learning well. Uh, and therefore, but sometimes it's really difficult as a parent, and therefore we might all need a little bit of support at some point. And connecting parents to the right support um, often will help them to, to kind of meet their children's needs. And we know that we've had missed opportunities, so let's understand what those missed opportunities are, and let's kind of connect people up. And we're doing lots of work around family hubs. Um, and how we can give the right uh, messages, communication, information around the free offer, around parenting, early years provision, etc. The second priority is around that identification, so early identification of neglect and using evidence-based tools uh, to identify neglect. And we'll touch on that today in terms of our graded care profile as the chosen evidence-based tool. Uh, but we're also looking to develop a toolkit for anybody working with children and families to make it much easier to identify neglect, but more importantly, to work with the families on identifying what neglect might mean and the impact on the children and the change that need to happen. And it's that working with families that will enable our sustained um, outcome. We're also looking at the effectiveness of our interventions, both at what we do single agency, but who else we connect to, and what sustainable support we put in place to ensure families can thrive. Um, so most of us professionals will be in a child or family life for a period of time. When we step away, we want to make sure that that scaffolding of support is there for the family um, when they need it, and that connectivity with the net with a network of support. So we are looking as part of our website and our, uh, to build a toolkit for professionals and practitioners. We'll be sharing some of the best practice around that. So again, today, we'll be sharing some of that um, with you. And then the fourth priority comes back to that really complicated structure chart where it connected with partnership boards. So the leadership and the oversight and understanding how we make a difference multi-agency will be really important to take it forward. So that kind of that, that sign up from your different organisations and maybe reflect on who is it that sits on the neglect steering group from my organisation? Who sits it? Who sits on the um, leadership group within the Safe Learning Partnership Board? Because as a pr practitioner, if you feel that there is a barrier to your practice, which needs to be resolved at the Safeguarding Partnership Board, you can feed that in either through the Neglect Steering Group or through the, the leadership. So it's really important that you know who represents where and how you can feed that in. Okay, so that's the strategy. Um, like I said, the plan is there. If people have got any questions, if you want to get involved, we, we're going to develop like a champions, neglect champions group about sharing that good practice. Let us know.